I'm like business above the table, comfort and laziness below the table. I have the greatest sweater on. This is heavy. It's probably gold for me to put in my retirement account, or it could be granite. I will just not take anything for granite on this channel. Did you just go like chisel out my kitchen? This is kind of pretty. So do I get to keep this? All right, well, I do not know a whole lot about granite. I know that it goes on countertops. JTV's favorite geologist, one of our favorite geologists. I'm just gonna come on today and talk about granite. Okay, so you did not Rip this out of my kitchen. No, that is actually a really it pretty piece pretty. of granite. It is pretty, it's kind of what, like a purpley color? So what you guys are looking at is pretty much a really fairly stereotypical granite. Some of you may see this in your countertops at home or if you go to like a uh, rock yard. What do we have to do to get a granite table? Order one. So what you guys are it's looking cool. at is basically what happens deep in the earth when you've got a magma moving up into a plume or into a chamber. So if anybody's ever seen like the lava lamps and stuff, when you have- Those are wacky. So when I you have one. the lava in your lava lamp heat up and then it starts to make a bubble. That's a plume. And then it comes up and kind of, you get this like neck on it and then it makes like a little ball at the What's top. What's the country That's of origin? That's like a plume. The country of origin on a lava lamp. Okay. What's in here? This is heavy too. Wow, that's actually really pretty. These are way prettier than those. You guys need to quit teaching her new words. <laughs> I like that blue. Is that mica in there? Or muscovite? Biotite mica. Mica, So hey, still hey. mica, but it's biotite. Biotite is a hands. very dark, Oh, I mica. see that. So you yeah. see how dark it is? So what you've got there is actually a piece of a pegmatite. So this is K2 granite. K2 basically refers to if anybody has ever heard about climbing Mount Everest, so you have K2. So that's actually Pakistani in origin. Oh, cool. But because it's along the same mountain range, people just started associating it with K2. What's really neat about it is that you have these really pretty azurite spheres in here and um, the azurite is actually a secondary growth in oh, that's the granite. Azurite. Yes. Wow. That's why it's such wait, but it looks like it's just colored over. Right. So the azurite is almost like a micro crystalline, not you can actually see that it's kind of growing in between the grains and the color may actually be also staining that's wild. the feldspar that's also in that granite. So here's a cabochon of K2. That's really cool. Isn't that cute? Look at that. With the formation of different granites. So, and the reason I brought a pegmatite is because we do actually get a lot of gemstones from different pegmatites. So a pegmatite, is a very coarse grained, as in super big crystals, mm -hmm. type of rock that is very well known for also forming some really beautiful gem quality crystals like your aquamarines and some other barrels, and then some really pretty smoky quartzes and mm -hmm. things like that. Granite is actually an igneous rock. So you have sedimentary, metamorphic, and igneous. Right. This is what we call an intrusive igneous rock. So intrusive means that it does not come to the surface like a magma or something like that, if you have an intrusive igneous rock, you have a plume of magma that comes in and either moves in between the layers of rock or it cuts across fractures in the layers of rock to create the plume. So if anybody's ever been to um, California, to Yosemite, yep. Half Dome, it's a big piece of granite. And the way that it forms is what is really kind of neat about it because as geologists, we can learn a ton about the minerals in there because they all cool at certain rates and oh. crystallize out of a melt oh. at certain times. Where do these different colors come from? So, I assume, okay, they're so all different minerals. They're all different minerals. So granite is, granite is a rock. It's a rock. A rock is material that is composed of a bunch of different separate minerals. So then how does granite get the determination of granite when it's just a bunch of separate minerals? A lot of it has to do with the chemistry of it. Okay. So what minerals are actually present. So to be termed a granite, the grain sizes have to be a certain size and it has to contain at least 20% quartz. So if you guys can see, so this kind of more clear, lighter gray stuff is actually the quartz in there. The more opaque white is a type of feldspar. The pink or the more pinkish is another type of feldspar. And feldspar is very common. Yeah. Very common. Extremely common. And then the black 
is probably some sort of biotite. Tell me how these form. Okay, with granite, you can get different formations. So you can have something called a tabular or non-tabular formation, and then you can have concordant or discordant formations. And so a tabular formation is about what it sounds like. It's something that's more shaped like this rather than being a big bubble. Mm -hmm. uh, Non-tabular is, of course, something that's more like a big bubble. And they can have some different shapes. So some of them can be actually kind of like a bowl rather mm -hmm. than a bubble. Oh, cool. And they have different names. With the concordant and discordant, concordant means that they are moving between the layers of rocks. So usually that's typically horizontal because that's the way that rocks are laid down normally. So you can have these layers of rock and then you have your magma actually move in between them. A discordant tabular body moves through fractures in the rock, and this can mean that they can move upwards through those fractures. Geologists call these dikes and sills. Okay. And so a sill is like a window sill. It's usually horizontal, and a dike actually moves up through the fractures. So if you guys are ever driving along the side of the road and you look over and you happen to see just some really crazy rocks that have these big, basically look like stove pipes, moving up through them, you are looking at dikes and sills. So guys, let's take a closer look. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you take a closer look at this piece of granite with the azure eye googly eye. This is a googly eye, by the way. It's a very scientific term we're gonna use today. The reason I included a piece of pegmatite today is because a lot of pegmatites have very similar chemical compositions to granites, but a lot of times they'll also have much bigger crystals than the average granite. Today, did you have fun today? I had a lot of fun. We're always learning and we're always remembering how cool the world of geology and gemology can be. All right, everyone, tell Elizabeth, thank you so much for coming on. We love having gemologists versus geologists episodes. You pretty much like hosted the video today. A little bit. Is your moral support. I was. Moral support. You know what? I was just distracted by the googly eye. Is there an emoji that's like hand? clapping. Oh. Send, find and send Elizabeth the hand clap and don't forget to like and subscribe. You don't want to miss out on future gemologist versus geologist episodes. I am so thankful to have Elizabeth here, especially at the end of the day. You good? Do you want to say anything? Any last words? Any last words?